Hello class, welcome to the next segment in the week six material. And in this segment, we're going to take a look at how we can get information out of a function when we tell a function to run. So this kind of extends on what we talked about in the previous segment where we posed the question, how can we get information out of a function uh, when you say that we can't, uh, or when you say that whatever variables are defined within the function stay within the function. And that'll be the question that we answer with this segment. We're going to show how you can get information out of functions. And uh, I'll also go ahead and mention this tends to be very confusing at first and very counterintuitive. So it might be necessary to go over what I'm going to cover in this video multiple times in order for you to get a better understanding of what else is going on here. Because in explaining this process, there are a lot of moving parts which... Uh, can be kind of difficult to keep track of, but I'm going to do my best to explain what exactly is going on here. So what we have here is almost the same exact addition function we had in the previous segment. So we have a function that takes in two values, adds those two numbers together, that result goes in the sum. But now instead of printing out the equation that we got or the equation that we evaluated, now we have on here on line four, we have this return command. You'll see it's also colored nice and blue. And here it says return the sum. And this return statement is essentially how we actually get the information out of a function when we tell a function to run. So let's actually walk through how exactly that process works. So here on line six, I have print statement. And you'll also notice that I have pretty much the same exact thing that I had earlier, I'm telling this function add to run with these two particular numbers. So just like before, this two will go into this x here, and this two will go into this y here. The computer will take those two values, add them together, get a result for this variable, and then whatever number or whatever value stored in that variable is what the function returns. And I'll often refer to this part here as the returned value. So in this case, on line six, we pass two to x, we pass two to y, two plus two is four, that value goes in the sum, and by returning this variable, the sum, the return value of this particular function call is going to be four. And when we have some sort of function call like what we have here on line six, after the computer is done running the function, this entire command to call the function essentially gets replaced with the returned value of that particular function call. So in this case on line six, we take this two, pass it to x, take this two, pass it to y, again telling this function add to run. We tell the computer to add those two numbers together. Two plus two is four. Four goes in the sum. And our return value is the value that is stored in the sum, which we've concluded to be four, based on what we have here on line six, just running what's on line six. And since the return value is 4, that value of 4 is what's going to, in the end, replace the highlighted portion on the screen here. It's going to replace the original command to tell the function to run. So since the return value replaces the original function call, again, what I've kept highlighted on the screen here, this program, in essence, is just going to print out what that return value is. And again, walking through that process again, we tell the computer to look for this function called add. The two goes into the x. The two goes into this y. Add those two numbers together to get a value for the sum. And then our returned value is whatever number or whatever value is put in our variable called the sum. And after that's all said and done, the returned value, whatever that might be, goes in and replaces the original function call. Again, the portion that I've had highlighted here on line 6. So based on that, we would expect this print statement on line six to just simply print out the number four. That is the return value we get back from telling the function to run with these parameters that we pass to the function here. And if we walk through the same logic that we have here on line seven, so this time we pass one to x, five to y, just like before. Take those two numbers that we pass to the function, add them together to get a result for the sum or to get a value for the sum. And then here on line four, we take the value that we put in the sum and that becomes the return value. And just like before, the return value that we get goes in and replaces the original function call 
in other words, the portion that I have highlighted here on line 7. So this particular function call in the end will give us back a return value of 6 after running through the function. So that means the number 6 will replace what I have highlighted here on line 7, meaning the computer will print out a number 6 here. And then same idea on line 8. The 9 goes into x, the 8 goes into y. Add those two numbers together to get 17. 17 goes into sum, which is also the return value. So that return value of 17 goes and replaces the original function call, again, the portion that I have highlighted here on line 8. So that means we're going to print out the value of 17 or print out the return value. So we've deduced that line 6 should print out 4, line 7 should print out 6, and line 8 should print out 17. So if we want to, we can go ahead and confirm that, and you can see we do get, in fact, get 4, 6, and 17. Now again, I'll go ahead and mention this again. The name of the function here does not have any bearing on what the function actually does. So if I wanted to, I could go into this function and change this to be a subtraction. So now, when I pass 2 to x and 2 to y here, now I get 2 minus 2, which is 0. That 0 then goes in this variable called the sum, which is also the return value. So the return value being zero in this case goes in and replaces the original function call, which I've just highlighted here on line six. So now this print statement on line six would give us a value of zero. Even though the function itself is called add, we're not actually adding anything together at any point in the function. You can see the commands that we have in the function, which is what the function actually does. You can see we're not adding anything together. We are in fact subtracting one variable from the other. But if we go through the same logic that we have here, the 1 goes into x, the 5 goes into y, 1 minus 5 is negative 4, which goes into sum, which also happens to be the return value. So that return value of negative 4 will replace the portion that I just highlighted here on line 7. Then same idea for line 8. The 9 goes into x, the 8 goes into y. I'll go ahead and highlight that beforehand. 9 minus 8 is 1, which goes into sum. Whatever's in the sum, that is our return value and that return value goes and replaces the original function call that we started with. So this, if this logic holds, if this process really does hold, now I'm going to get zero from this print statement on line six, negative four for this print statement on line seven, and positive one for this print statement on line eight. And you can see we do in fact get those results. So to avoid wild confusion, or more confusion than is necessary, let's go ahead and change that back to a plus so that our function is a little bit more intuitive. But again, that's just to sort of underscore the point about how the name of the function doesn't directly influence what the function actually does. What actually influences the function's functionality, what it actually does, are the commands that we put in the function. So in this case, we had one variable subtracted from the other. That was what the function was actually doing, whereas what we started with, which is now on the screen here, we're taking two variables and adding them together, which again is being performed on line three. Now, another thing that I'll go ahead and mention is when the function hits a return statement, then the function stops running. So you can sort of think of this as being analogous to the break command that we discussed for loops. When the loop hits a break command, then that just terminates the loop altogether. Similar thing happens with the return statement when you're working with a function. So at any point, if the function hits a return command or a return statement, the function stops running its current call. And we can verify this by using a couple print statements here. So here I'll just have the program printout test every time we tell the function to run. So you can see nothing too crazy going on here. Now I'll move this print statement after the return command. So now when we tell this function to run, it's going to add the values that it was given together. Then it's going to return the sum. And by running this return command on line four, the function's execution stops. It stops running the commands in the function. So therefore, that means the computer is actually never going to make it to what's on line five here. Even though it's indented, meaning it's part of the function, since we hit this return command on line four here, then that terminates the function's call altogether, which means it will in fact skip over anything that appears below it. And now you see when we run this, it's no longer running the print statement because this return command was terminating the function's call, which means it was skipping over what's on line five here.